Hello, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Today on my channel about Norse language and myth, I'm continuing my new series of Old Norse lessons with part four, I think it is, about the first verbs we're going to take a dive into, some of our most basic weak verb types. <laughs> Now, in the scholarly literature about Germanic languages such as Old Norse, Old English, Old High German, even Modern German, you'll find terms such as strong and weak nouns, adjectives, and verbs. There is no intended connotation here <laughs> about, uh, you know, this kind of strong, uh, you know, and, and weak. It's it's not about putting up and putting down. It's uh, the strong roughly speaking, the ones designated strong are a little bit more complex than the ones designated weak, but even that isn't always all that true. Um, strong types um, include, for instance, the, the noun types that we reviewed in part two uh, of this lesson series. Those are, are strong nouns. It's also weak nouns. But with verbs, it makes sense to start with weak verbs because the system is it's easier to explain starting with the weak ones going to the, the strong ones than vice versa. There are probably, if you, and not even probably, I know that if you count up all the verbs in an Old Norse dictionary, you're gonna find more weak ones than strong ones. However, some of the most frequent ones you're going to be dealing with are strong. But nonetheless, there are many frequent weak ones and I wanna deal with those here. So let's talk a little bit about verbs. When you look up a verb in an Old Norse dictionary, you're gonna see the infinitive form. That is the form equivalent to an English when I say, I can drive a car. It's the drive right there. Or to be is grand or whatever. It's that be, it's that, that to be, to do, to hear, to whatever. Now, in order to use the verb, however, you're going to have to modify it. Much like nouns, Old Norse verbs have to be modified depending on what they're doing in the sentence. Now, this is often a little bit more familiar to people today than the noun modifications or inflections are, because many people study Spanish in school, or perhaps are native speakers of a language like Spanish, or, or any number of other languages that do this, where you change the ending of the verb to indicate who's doing what, right? Amo, amas, ama, I love you, love, he loves. Um, Old Norse is the same thing, although unlike Spanish and some other languages like Latin, uh, you don't have to, or you do have to actually state what the subject is. So I can't just inflect the verb, I have to have the subject stated too, uh, like you do in French or English. So when you look up a verb and you find that infinitive form, it will almost always end in A. There are a few exceptions that aren't in principle really exceptions, but for now let's say they all end in A. You have to knock off that final A to get the form that you actually add stuff to. So let's start with extremely common verb, mala, the speak. When you look that up in the dictionary, you are going to find it in that form, but you're gonna to have to knock off that A before you start adding endings. Now mala, speak, is what I call an I-type weak verb. Now this is a place where you're gonna find a lot of inconsistency between different instructors and writers. Uh, is in how we talk about these different classes. I call this I type. You'll see why. It's because most of the endings of the present are I's. And what you're going to see when you look that up, let's say you're looking in the Cleesby Vickerson Dictionary, which I recommend. It's very old, but still very thorough and comprehensive. You can find it online in many places. You're going to see mala, comma, t, comma. What that t is, is it shows you what the past tense stem is. You're going to add that to the root, which is mal, knock the a off, of the infinitive to get the root mal. Past tense stem is malt. That's what's that's showing you up to the comma. And I'll show you uh, how to use this in just a moment here. So what does the present of malo look like? I speak, ek mali. You speak, singular, thu malir. He, she, it speaks, han, hon, that, malir. We speak, ver malum. Y'all speak, Ther maliv. They speak, ther 
thar, thou, mala. So your endings are i, ir, ir, um, id, a. Now, um, id, a in the plural is going to be true for almost all verbs. This is obviously going to be a few exceptions. There's, a, there's always exceptions. But um, id, a, you can remember pretty confidently for just about every verb. Now, let me also note, we've just recently talked about personal pronouns in this series. If you're using the duals, right, we, too, you, too, vit, fit, you just use the plural form of the verb. There's no special dual form of the verb uh, like there is in some of the European languages. All right, so that's the present. I speak, you speak, etc. What about past tense? I spoke, you spoke. Well, there we have ek malta. Notice we've got that T that we took off the dictionary, right? We add that to the root, and then we add our past tense index. Ek malta, thu maltir, han, hon, that, malti, ver maltum, ther maltuth, ther, ther, thou, maltu. So your true endings, a, ir, e, um, uth, u, added to the past tense stem. All right. Now let's take a different weak verb that's quite common and uh, see if there's something different or the same here. Let's talk about here. That is an Old Norse hyra. Now. I'm not sure I mentioned this in the pronunciation video, um, but it's something people remark on because it's so different from modern Icelandic. I say that E-Y diphthong, much like the O slash Y diphthong is said in Norwegian is Ui, or I mean, that's as close as my American accent is gonna get, right, fellas? Um, just to get ahead of those comments. Um, that is almost certainly what the sound was in Old Norse. Why it's represented as E-Y is anybody's guess. But in Old Norwegian, Right, and the relatively few documents we have from there, these words are written with that O slash Y. And of course, in modern Norwegian Nynorsk, this is written H, O slash Y, R, A, Hyra. My firm belief is that that's the sound in Old Norse, and, and the modern Icelandic A is a much later uh, innovation. There's no reason why uh, E, I, and E, Y would be kept so distinctly separate in Old Norse unless they did have a, a different uh, pronunciation. You'd expect them to be spelled the same if they were pronounced the same. Um, by people who were just starting to write a new language in the Roman alphabet. Anyway, hoira, to hear. Now, we look this up in the Cleese Vivian Dictionary. We're going to see hoira, comma, ev, comma. Now, that shows you that unlike uh, mala, where you have a past tense ek malta, with hoira, you're going to add ev to the root. Remember, the root is what you get when you knock off the a, so you're going to get ek hoira in the past. Let's make sure we know what that looks like. If you want to take a moment and guess, you can pause this video and think about it. And now I'm going to show you what hyra looks like in its forms, present and past. So, ek hyri, I hear. Thu hyrir, you hear. Han hyrir, he hears. Ver hyrum, we hear. Ther hyrith, y'all hear. Ther hyra, they hear. All right, now past tense, ek Hörða, I heard. Þú hörðir, you heard. Hon hörði, she heard. Ver hörðum, we heard. Þer hörðuð, y'all heard. Þer hörðu, they heard. All right, so it's in principle the same, right? In the present tense, we're adding the same present tense endings to the root. In the past tense, we're going to have a different stem, but we're gonna then add the same past tense endings to that past tense stem. All right, now, after a uh, quick word from my sponsor here, I'm gonna come back and talk about a different class of weak verbs that works almost the same, but you need to substitute uh, A's for I's and the past tense is a little bit different. So those are the I-type weak verbs. Mala and hyra are very good examples. And don't worry that you're going to find, you know, things where the past tense 
stem is like a K or a G or something, it's going to be T, ev, or D. Okay, it's going to be one of those dental consonants. These are related to the past tense endings and say English walk, walked, right? It's, it's a, a dental sound, a D, T, or ev that's making that past tense. All right, let's talk about the A types. Now here, the plurals in the present are going to be the same. I mentioned most verbs is m, i, a. The present singular is a little bit different because we have a's instead of i's. So let's look at scapa, which is create. It's related to English shape. Ek scapa, I create. Thu scapar, you create. Thot scapar, it creates. Notice this is just like the i, ir, ir in the i type, but we got a, ar, ar in the a type. And then the present plural the same. Ver scopum, notice we've got that U mutation, a U will always change an A in the preceding syllable into an O hook. So ver scopum, not scopum. Ther scapid, y'all create. Theu scapa, they create. Now the past tense is a little bit different. So when you look one of these up in the Cleesby Vixen Dictionary, you're going to see scapa, comma, av. That means that it's an A type verb. Just the fact that you've got av as the past tense stem ending is, is an indication it's an a type. So what you do here is, again, you knock off the a for the root, and then you just add that past stem ending, so we get ex scapav, but then we add the exact same past tense endings as we do for the i types. So here we get ek scapava, I created. Thu scapavir, you created. Han scapavi, he created. Ver Scopudum. Now here, what you've got is, all right, of course our rule is that U's change A's and preceding syllables into hooko, but that means that's for a stressed preceding syllable. The second syllable is unstressed, so when you've got an A between the mutating U and the mutated hooko, that A is also going to turn into a U. So, scopudum, not scapadum. Scop uthum. Okay, so ver scopudum, we created. Ther scopudu, y'all created. Ther scopudu, they created. Let's take a look at another one of these. Let's talk about heria, which is to raid. Very Viking verb, right? All right, so I would say ek heria, thu heriar. Han heriar, ver herium. Notice no mutation because there's no a in the root, uh, in, in, in the root of the verb to be mutated into hooko. So ver herium, ther herid. Typically j's disappear before i's, and ther heria. Past tense, ek heriada, I rated. Thu heriadir, you rated. Han Heriadi, he rated. Ver her you them. Now, here, notice that the U in the ending is still mutating that A that comes before it in the ending, uh, but it's not going to mutate into a full hooko because it's not the root syllable. U's in endings always change A's in the syllables before them. If the A is stressed, it becomes hooko. If the A is not stressed, meaning not the first syllable in the word, it just turns into another U. So, ver heriudum, we rated. Ther heriudud, y'all rated. Ther heriudud, they rated. So, there again, if you look this up in the Klesi Vixen Dictionary, you can see heria, comma, av. That tells you right away this is an a type verb and its past tense stem ends in av. All right. I'm going to give you some exercises about this, and I'm also going to give you a few more vocabulary items for your flashcards or whoever you're learning vocabulary. Here are your vocabulary items. These are I-type weak verbs. I'm going to give you quite a few. You're going to see these pretty often. Mala, speak. Hera, hear. Brenna, burn. This is transitive. I burn it, not I am burning. Filgia, follow. Senda, send. Nevna, name. Trua, believe. Yota, agree to, 
accept. Führer, bring. Then, for A types, learn these. Scapa, create. Heria, raid. Sikra, overcome, defeat. Hardna, harden. Kala, call, like call out to. Now, that's quite a few. These are all quite common. And since, of course, we're going to be starting with uh, some readings from Snorri Sturluson's prose Edda, some of these have particular um, mythic uh, overtones in the, in the sections. We're going to start reading from that once we get to our readings a few units hence. So do the exercises I'm going to show you here on the screen. There's also going to be answers to the exercises shown after the uh, uh, questions with blanks are displayed. And if you have a uh, need for further clarification, maybe uh, an extra exercise or two to make sure you're getting it right, feel free to reach out to me on Patreon if you're over there. All right, folks. Well, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best.